Welcome back to another exciting chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn about electrons and where they are located in an atom. Now, specifically, we are going to learn about electron configuration. Basically, this configuration describes the energies and position of all electrons in an atom. Now, this electron configuration follows the format of energy level that consists of one or more sublevel S, P, D, or F. And then in that sublevel, at that specific energy level, it has a certain number of electrons. So going down here, we have another representation of the whole entire format. Again, energy level represented by the letter N, S, P, D, F. And then we have the number of electron. Now, one thing we have to realize is this, that different sublevel has different number of orbitals, and orbitals can be represented by the following picture right here. So what we have here is, this is an S orbital, and what do you notice? There's only one figures for S. But for the P, there are three different orientation, but the same shape. That tell you that has three orbitals, and each one of them is represented by a box, okay? Where the D, notice how we have five different images, each one of them is one orbitals. And one last thing we are going to cover is that the F sublevel. Now the F sublevel has seven orbitals. And seven orbitals, of course, can be drawn with seven box. And you don't have to be familiar with the shape of the F sublevel because it has too many different shapes. But you should be able to recognize the different shape of SPD sublevel. Now, what is so important about the orbitals? Well, each Orbitals can hold up to two electrons, one going up, the other one going down. They go in opposite direction because electrons are negative, so they repel each other. So one orbital is equal to two electrons. Now the beauty thing behind this is that all this information is given to us on the periodic table. So let's look at the periodic table. First, we have the period number, which we already know that that's given to us on the periodic table. So as you can see, we have the period number all the way through seven. Then we have the group A all the way to 8A. And notice how different region on the periodic table represent different type of sublevel. So at a particular energy level one, you notice one box, two box over here. So that tell you there are two electron because remember, in a neutral atoms, the number proton is equal to the number electron, which is that number right there. So therefore, if you look at this at energy level, what is the only possible sublevel that we have? S sublevel, okay? Where if we go down to the next layer, think of this like multiple story building. This is the first floor, this is the second floor. Now the second floor, it's gonna be further away from the ground, right? Now on the second floor, we have the S and the P. So going across, we know that we have two S, and 2p. And this right here, again, is your energy level. So what do you notice? Well, look at the S. We have one box, two box, which correlate to the number of orbitals on here. So we have one box right there. And then up here, we have one, two. So each box represents two electrons. But for the P, if we know there are three boxes or three orbitals, what is three times two? Well, three times two, it is six. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six electron right there. Now let's go to the next energy level. In this third floor, we have the S sublevel and then the P sublevel as well. So in this case, we have the P sublevel as well. So therefore, again, the same pattern, right? Now let's get to the D. Remember we told you the D has five orbitals, right? So five orbitals. What's five times two? That is 10. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Isn't that nice? Now let's go all the way to the F sub level. So we know F has seven orbitals. So what's seven times two? 14. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And there you go. And the only thing left is now let's go back and look at the energy level. So this one's three, but this one's four. Okay, so what's the difference? Well, it turned out that the D sub level is one less than the period number. So if this is four, this becomes three. If it is five, this becomes four. Now let's go down to the F sub level. Well, F is two less than the period. So see how this bolded right there? That's basically in here. 
So we go six. If we have the period number six, what is six minus two? Six minus two is four. There you go. And here we go to the next one. Seven minus two is five. So as you can see, the S and the P follow the period number. See? One, one, two, two, three, three. And for the D is one less, and for the F is two less. So all the information is given to us on the periodic table. Now let's do a practice problem. Based on the electron configuration of the last electron in an atom, identify the atom. It's energy level and sublevel. So we have 3P4, we know that is a sublevel P, that's easy. And in energy level 3, there you go. Now what is the name of this atom? So 3P4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is sulfur right there. So that is sulfur right there. So we have S right there. Now let's try the next one. Based on the electron configuration, in this case, it's the same question, right? We have 3D5, so the sublevel is D, energy level is 3. Come from there and go back up here to the 3D5. So here we have the 3 already. So again, on the actual periodic table, it won't show you the energy level, so you have to figure it out. So if it's 3, 3 plus 1 is what? 4. So we go to 4 and we go across and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that right there is manganese. Manganese is MN. There you go. And that's all we have to do. Let's try the last one. We have 5F3. So the sublevel is F. And in energy level, what? 5. There you go. And remember, for F is 2 less than the period. So what's 2 plus 5? So that is 7 right there. Okay. So that's 7 right there. So now we go up here and go look at 7. Go across. And we know going down here. So one, two, three, so that is uranium, and that's all we had to do. And that's how you look at electron configuration, especially the last part of the configuration, which allow you to identify the identity of that particular atoms. And as always, if you have any question, take a picture of your work, put in your Google Drive, and put in the form, and we will help you from there. And we'll see you next time on another exciting chemistry lesson.